Hey Mechatronic students, Andrew Dolan here to talk to you about the Fanuc robot and jogging in world mode. So in previous videos we talked about jogging in joint mode, it's pretty straightforward. Each individual joint can be moved independently. You know, and in world mode things act a little bit differently where it's a Cartesian style of motion. Um, things move X, Y, and Z and then things move about the X axes and about the Y axes and about the Z axes and we call those minor axes of yaw, pitch, and roll and we'll show you a demonstration of these things. So to get things started here, uh, let's take a look at the um, take a look at the teach pendant menus and <clears throat> right now uh, I've got this set up in uh, the position data is showing up here in joint mode. So each joint is actually set to pretty darn close to zero degrees of rotation. And there's a button on our position data here that we can show instead of having in joint mode, we can switch it over to world mode. And that's where you hit the soft key, F4. And when I hit the soft key, the positional data shows up in world mode and this is where it gets a little bit funky so it's showing me um, these are dimensions in millimeters so 580 ish millimeters on the x-axis let's just talk about that one by itself uh, before we get too carried away um, so the first thing I want to point out is there's some fantastic resources for you guys uh, this is the um, Handling Tool and Operations Manual that you guys can find few copies of this in the lab. And in this, it demonstrates, talks a little bit about jogging in world frame mode. And we draw a line through the robot base to figure out where these things are located. So um, it says in here that the intersection of joint two motor. So we find joint two number joint two motor that on the robot and then draw a theoretical line through it that's going to be the location of these different measurements here so to help us out with this a little bit um, I've switched let me just move my camera out here there we go got a nice image of the robot everything joint wise is in zero 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 but it was telling me in this data, uh, positional data for world mode, that the x-axis was at uh, 580 millimeters. Well, I converted that into inches because I need to. Um, you can see down here on the screen, um, x-axis is running in and out this way. So there's this thing called a right hand rule that's associated with jogging in world mode. So if I take my hand like this, the, and uh, imagine that my hand is parked right at the center axis of the robot, and then in line with joint number two. So if my hand's right there, uh, this finger, or pointer finger, represents the x axis, and motion straight out would be positive, and motions back this direction would be negative. So x positive, x negative. And there's many times when I'm jogging robots around, uh, I think about this right hand rule and it mentally helps me predict which way the robot's going to move. The Y axis positive is my middle finger here. And again, the tip of the finger indicates the positive direction. And then this finger represents the Z axis. So Z positive, Z negative. Y positive, Y negative. X positive, X negative. So if we were to draw a theoretical plane through the center of this robot, um, so that's what this sign is indicating, if we were to slice this robot right across this area, right in the middle of joint number two, it said that we were X axis um, 580 millimeters away, Let me, and that happens to be about 22 inches, almost 23 inches, from the center of the tool. And if, if just a crude tape measure alignment here, uh, at about 23 inches, 
That's to the distance between the center of the tool and the center of joint number two. So the number that we showed there as 580 millimeters on the x-axis, that's what that's referring to. Um, the y-axis is going to be split right this direction, and the y-axis number was at zero. So it makes sense that the center of the tool point here is perfectly aligned, so that would be at zero. And the z-axis is being shown at 280 millimeters, and for the z-axis, I would be slicing it um, right down the middle here and then measuring up and down. So this is a little bit of a interesting measurement. In the middle of joint number two to the center of that tool, it's saying that it should be about um, 147 millimeters. Did I get that right? No, 280 millimeters, so about 11 inches. And if I kind of get things lined up here, yeah, I'm pretty close to that 11 inch mark to the center of that. So those numbers are a little bit strange in terms of how that works, but let's, uh, let's jog the robot around and to start this I'm going to um, put the robot in joint mode and first uh, fold down joint number five. All right, I, I prefer to have joint number five pointing downward um, when jogging it in world mode. So, <clears throat> and we'll explain some of those details in a little bit. Okay, so if I were to look at the coordinates of the robot right now, um, I can see in joint mode, everything's pretty much at zero except for joint number five is pretty close to 90 degrees and that'll work for what we're working on now so i'm going to press the um, coordinate button and change it so that we are in world mode and do world mode jogging so on my teach pendant uh, to jog in world mode i need to see that it is set for world mode and that's going to show up right here there's world mode on the on the teach pendant and how I switch between joint mode and world mode is to press the coordinate button right here. And I'm pressing that now and you'll see it going from um, joint mode into world mode. So the most common ones I'm jogging in would be joint and world. So we, I typically don't use the other ones very much. So that's joint mode if I keep pressing that button it goes to world mode and it shows up here indicating that I'm in world mode as well. So we're all set to do jogging in world mode and then I'll change the positional data here so that shows me where I'm at in world mode as well. I can hit the F4 soft key and that changes the uh, configuration here so that I'm in world mode. Uh, so the positional data shows up that way too. So let's go ahead and jog the robot around in world mode and appreciate the differences that we have. So I'm gonna go ahead and dead man switch shift reset and jogging in world mode. So um, again, remembering the, the right hand rule, and perhaps I, I'll get on the other side of this because I'm gonna be using that right hand rule quite frequently to show this. All right. So with my teach pendant back here, uh, right hand rule. So X positive would be moving the robot in that direction. So let's demonstrate this. X positive, here we go. So you can see the robot's moving straight in and out. It's moving and articulating multiple axes at the same time in order to be able to do this. So that is a straight linear motion in the x axis to accomplish this and you know we should always be mindful when we're jogging that we don't crash the robot into itself or into the table or into any fixtures that's why we have the joystick in hand to test these things out so that's demonstrating x positive x negative okay now let's switch it up to the y axis so again thinking about that right hand rule so if you're on the back side of the robot kind of where all the electrical connectors are, that's where your arm should be. And the y-axis, if I go y-positive, this 
the tooling should move straight in this direction. So here's Y positive. And again, it's interpolating multiple axes, so it's just a straight line motion of Y positive, Y negative. Okay, and here is a, a Z positive. So again, right hand rule. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, right hand rule, so my thumb is sticking straight up, that's the Z axis. So Z positive should move this tooling straight up. Z negative should move it down. So here's Z positive. Here's Z negative. And it's just a straight, nice linear motion in that direction. Okay. So Z positive, Z negative. So negative goes into the table. Again, that right-hand rule is something you're going to need to appreciate. So those are the major axes of the robot being jogged in world mode. Now we're going to switch it up and show you the minor axes in world mode. So we can see on our teach pendant, we have our X, Y, and Z axes. And then we have these minor axes, yaw, pitch, and roll. So this will move it about the X axes, about the Y, and about the Z axes. So let's take a look at those motions jogging in world mode. All right, that's a pretty decent view. So we're going to go ahead and jog this thing upward. Um, so that's just one of the major axes again, just straight up Z positive. Okay, now this is where it gets really interesting. The X axis is running straight in and out of the robot. Okay, so basically um, this is the X axis in and out. Okay, so let's take that X axis and rotate the minor axis about that. This is where it gets really kind of interesting. So if you could imagine a line straight through here, it's moving that X axis, or moving your, uh, I guess this is the yaw motion. So this is the X minor axis is another name for it. And it's really interesting how that just moves about that axis. If you can imagine, again, a, a straight line through here, it's keeping it fixed in space. So that was a rotation about the X. Here's a rotation about the Y. The Y axis is running straight through. So I get some junk in the way. Um, straight through this direction. So imagine a straight line here. And here's a motion about the Y axis. So it's rotating about that minor axis, and it's based on the end of, of arm tooling there. And then finally, uh, this is where it gets really kind of weird. This is the rotation about the Z axis. This is your minor Z. So I want you guys to experiment with these and get familiar with it. Um, it does some really interesting stuff here. So, um, there you go. So that was jogging in world mode. Things are moving in straight lines, X, Y, and Z. And the position data is a little bit stranger to kind of think about and understand. It's uh, in millimeters based on the intersection of that theoretical X, Y, Z on the robot. There's some good graphics in the programming manual that can as assist you with that and understand them. But um, most of our programs are executed in this XYZ world mode jogging. Uh, it's just a much more efficient way to get from point A to point B. Uh, if I had to move each individual joint, let's say I was trying to go out and reach a destination with this being the robot arm here, and I want to get to this point over here. By moving one joint at a time, yes, I can get there where 
I would move one joint here, move another joint to get to that point, move another joint. And you could see that moving all those joints independently is a bit frustrating to get to one spot. Um, the world mode jogging is a far more efficient way of doing it where it's straight X, Y, Z. Our brains think that way a little bit better. So it's much easier to get to this point from here by moving in world mode where I just move X out, maybe a little correction for Y, and then move down in Z. So um, definitely world mode is my favorite way of jogging the FANUC robot and probably one of the more widely used ways of doing it. So um, practice jogging the robot in world mode and try to understand the coordinate system, that positional data that shows up when you hit the position button on the teach pendant. Catch you next time.